Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who pursues us. God, you are a God who does not give up on us. God, you're the good shepherd who goes out in search of the one, in search of the lost sheep. God, you go out to where we are. Even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, you died for us. You, 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 you went the extra mile for us so you could bring us into your embrace, oh God. God, you are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. God, we come to you. You are our shelter. You are our strong fortress. God, there is safety in you. There is security in you. There is hope and there is future in you. God, and for each one who is watching, oh God, whether they have a relationship with you or whether they don't have a relationship with you, now is the time to respond to you, oh God. Now is the time to run into that shelter, to say, yes, God, I am yours. Take me in. God, we respond in faith today. We say, yes, God. We put aside ourselves. We put aside our ways. We put aside our thoughts, even our past and our sin, oh God. And we say, here we are, Lord. Here we are. We respond to you. We come to you the shelter, the living hope, our rock that is higher than us, that is stronger than us, and in you we have a firm foundation. Lord, we thank you for your spirit in us. We thank you that you are moving in our hearts and calling us to your own. And we respond in faith today and we say yes. We say yes to you. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Well, hello, everyone. I just loved all of the songs that we sang here in worship today. Uh, those, the first song we sang was about rejoicing. Let everything that has breath now praise you. Let everyone in this place sing a song of praise. That's, what, that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about praise. We're going to talk about rejoicing. And we're going to continue on in our series on love from 1 Corinthians 13. We've been talking for the last number of weeks from 1 Corinthians 13. And this is the, the, the verses that we're looking at. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. Let me just read them here. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And this is the scripture that we're looking at in this series, talking about love. What is love? What is the love of God? How is God's love displayed to us? And it's in all of these different little points that we're talking about that we understand the love of God, we understand God's heart for us, but it also reveals the way that God wants us to live in relationship with others. And so we see here love is patient in our relationship with others, whether it be your family or friends, co-workers, neighbors, love is patient. Okay, that's how that's a, God asks us to be patient. That's a display of love, is patience. 
Love is kind. God is kind to us. He wants us to be kind to other people, to, to the people that are around us. And so we're looking at each of these points from 1 Corinthians 13. Today what we're going to talk about is two points. It's kind of one point, kind of mixed in together, but it's two points. I've separated out into, we've separated out into two points. We're going to look at love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. And that's what we're going to look at today. But let's pray before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, everything that we do today, we commit to you. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithful to, faithfulness to us each and every day, each and every week. And God, because of your faithfulness, because of your goodness, your patience and kindness to us, Lord, we know that the things that you want to do in our hearts are things that are good. So God, we open our hearts to you. And we say, God, have your way in our lives. Do the things that you want. Correct the things that you want to correct in our lives. Make us more like you so that we can live on this earth being a representation of you and of your love. We thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said at the beginning, we're going to talk about praise and rejoicing. This word in the, ver in the Bible says, Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. More accurately, it says, Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. And we know what the, the word rejoice means. It means to, to celebrate, to be joyful, to, to honor someone by, by lifting them up and to recognize their greatness. When we talk about rejoicing before God or rejoicing before Jesus, we're talking about we praise him, we lift our hands, we sing songs, we shout, we rejoice, we're thankful. Okay? It's... It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, in English, we use the word salutation. It's like a, a praise. We lift them up. We lift that person up. And that's what this word means, rejoice at wrongdoing. And so we see here, it says to rejoice at. We're going to look at the, what, what the other part of it says. But when we rejoice at something, it means you see something or there is an event that takes place and you rejoice because of that thing that happened. Let's look at a couple of examples in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 13. Okay? This is talking about the shepherd who lost one of his sheep. He left the 99 to go in search of the one and he went out and found the sheep and brought it back. In Matthew 18, verse 13, it says, And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it. Okay, it's the same Greek words in there. He re to rejoice at something. He rejoices over it more than, any, more than over the 99 that never went astray. In Luke 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 14, this is when the angel came to Zechariah and said, your son John's going to be born. And it, he said, you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. So he's saying that many people will rejoice at the event of John's birth. And so, rejoicing at wrongdoing. Okay, don't, it says love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. So, we're, we're trying to understand it, but we're understanding what we don't want to do, okay? So, rejoice at wrongdoing. So, the whole idea in this part, it's, it's meaning that when there is wrongdoing, or when there is an event of wickedness, or when there is sin, or when there is something wrong that is happening, love doesn't rejoice at that event. Love doesn't rejoice when it sees something wicked or wrong. 
Okay? So love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. The meaning of the word wrongdoing would be injustice, moral wrong, iniquity, something that is unjust or unrighteous, something that is wrong. And so the whole meaning of this phrase that says that love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. So when there is an event of wrongdoing, when there is a sin that is committed, when there is iniquity, when there is wrong or injustice, love doesn't rejoice when that thing takes place. Okay? So you might say to yourself, yeah, that's okay, I'm a good Christian. I don't rejoice at wrongfulness. I don't rejoice when I see iniquity or when I see things that are wrong. But let me ask you a couple questions. Have you ever had any of these thoughts? Maybe you say to yourself, oh, look at that person over there. What he did, that was so wrong. I would never do something like that. When you're, when you're looking at a situation or something that they did with pride, sometimes we can get to thinking that, oh yeah, I would never do something like that. I'm glad that my life is not like his. I'm glad that I am not like that person. And sometimes we can even, we can even start to judge ourselves by looking at other people and looking at their level of sin and say, oh yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not like them. I'm glad my life is not messed up like their life. I'm glad that I don't have this in my life or that problem in my life or this or that. And we start to judge and compare and it ends up being pride in our life. And in a way, maybe you're not singing songs and celebrating somebody's sin and their iniquity, but you're starting to think, oh yeah, man, you're starting to lift yourself up and you're, in a way, it's kind of like rejoicing because someone else fell. And it makes you look a little bit better when you compare yourself to them because you're not as bad as them. Jesus had some thoughts to say about this kind of thinking when he talked about the Pharisee and the sinful man who went into the temple. The Pharisee, he was lifting up his hands in the temple. You know, he was all proud. And he said, God, I thank you that I'm not like that sinful man standing in the corner over there like that. And then the sinful man was over there in the corner praying, God, you know, forgive me. I, I know I'm a sinner. I, I've done wrong. Please accept my sacrifice. And Jesus said the, the sinful man was more righteous than the proud, arrogant Pharisee. And so we don't want to be someone who rejoices at someone else's iniquity or wrongdoing. Maybe you would never say, oh yeah, doing this sin is very, very good. We're going to rejoice it. But maybe you'd never say that. But in your own heart and in your own pride, maybe you compare yourself. Okay, let's not be like that. That is not love. That is not thinking good thoughts about people. That's not wanting the best for people. That's only wanting the best for yourself, and that's just straight selfishness. Sometimes you might think to yourself, oh man, I'm glad I'm not in her situation. I would never do something like that. I'm happy that my life isn't as messed up as theirs is. That can be rejoicing in somebody's wrong. Rejoicing in somebody's problems. Rejoicing in somebody's iniquity. Maybe you say, maybe, oh, I'm not perfect, but at least I didn't do what they did. Let's stop all of these, this way of thinking. You know, I, I know it's out there. Sometimes, sometimes those sorts of thoughts kind of creep into my mind, but I have to say, no, that's just wrong. That doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help me because it just fills me up with pride. Let's stop all of that and say, okay, I'm going to rejoice in the truth. Listen to this. Proverbs 24, verses 17 to 18. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. Unless the Lord sees it and is displeased and turns away his anger from him. So Proverbs 24 says, Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. 
And let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Love does not rejoice at the consequences of somebody's sin. That's not love. Remember, this is agape love. Agape love is commitment, unconditional love. It's the same love that God has for us. Even when we are still sinners, Christ died for us. When we didn't care about God, he still loved us. And God wants us to have that same love for other people. Even though they might be doing this or doing that or living in sin. Okay, let's, let's stop comparing, stop being filled with pride, and have a heart of compassion for those people. So it says, love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, at the event of wrongdoing. But it rejoices with the truth. And it's very significant that there's two different words. It doesn't say love rejoices at the truth, but it says love rejoices with the truth. And that word with means alongside of the truth, together with the truth. It means people rejoicing, celebrating together. And so this word, this phrase means that you are rejoicing together with the truth. You're joining yourself with the truth. It's not just an event like wrongdoing or sin. You're rejoicing at that. No, it's rejoicing with the truth. Listen to these examples in the Bible. Okay? Luke 1.58. This is talking about Elizabeth. And it said, And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. Okay? So when it was talking about when the angel came to Zechariah and said, You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, they were saying they were, that they're going to rejoice at the event. But later on in Luke 158, it says, Elizabeth's, Neighbors and relatives heard the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. They had a party together. It wasn't just one person being filled with joy at an event, but it was now a group of people joining their hearts together, united together, having the same heart, and saying, okay, we're going to rejoice with Elizabeth. And so there's a, a big difference there. It's not just one person rejoicing at an event, but now it's a group of people rejoicing together. And the same, the same goes for um, the story of the lost sheep. It says, And when he comes home, talking about the shepherd, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me. He's not rejoicing at the sheep coming home, now he's rejoicing together with all of his neighbors and friends and saying, come on, let's celebrate together. It's a celebration because something happened, but it's you one heart and one unity together. Now we're all celebrating and rejoicing together. He says, rejoice with me for I have found my sheep that was lost. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says, if talking about the body and talking about how the church is the body of Christ, it says, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. So there's a big difference between rejoicing at and rejoicing with. Rejoicing at sees a situation, says, okay, I'm going to rejoice at that. But rejoicing with means there's a unity and a, a, a grouping together. Let's we're, we're, we have this one heart, and we're celebrating this thing together. And so it says in 1 Corinthians 13, he doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Okay? And so what this is, what this idea is, is love rejoices with the truth. It means that you're joining your heart together with the truth, and you're rejoicing with the truth. 
It is an invitation to rejoice together with the truth. There is joy and there is rejoicing in truth. There is joy in living the blessed life, like we say in John 10, verse 10. It's a, the blessed life of living in truth, the righteousness, peace, and joy. Truth invites us to rejoice with it in that blessing. And so there's a unity, just like we said, the group of people who, who, who gathered together and rejoiced together, now we can rejoice together with truth. I've kind of rephrased this part in John, in, uh, sorry, in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is not glad or happy at the event of wickedness or unrighteousness, but love is glad or happy along with or alongside of truth. So what love does, first of all, love needs to know what the truth is. And we get that from our relationship with God, reading the Word of God, knowing the truth from the Word of God. And when we know that, then we can see when someone lives according to the truth or when there's an example of truth, and we can celebrate in that truth together. And we can see and we can celebrate and rejoice with truth. How does God show us love in this way? Well, first of all, God never rejoices when he sees injustice, unrighteousness, or wickedness. God never, ever rejoices in that. It would be completely against his character to do that. But let's just see in the Bible. In Isaiah 65, verse 12. I will destine you to the sword, and all of you shall bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen. But you did what was evil in my, in my eyes, and, I, and chose what I did not delight in. So God says, what, what, what you did, what you chose, was evil, and I did not delight in that. God does not rejoice in evil. Again, in Isaiah 66, verse 4, it says, I also will choose harsh treatment for them and bring their fears upon them, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen. But they did what was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. So we see clearly God does not rejoice in wrongdoing. God is the God of love. God is love. He does not rejoice in wrongdoing. But God rejoices in truth. How can we show this agape love to others based on this part of the verse? How can we show love to others based on this section of verse? Well, the first thing we talked about already was to stop rejoicing at wickedness. Okay? A few times in the past number of months, we talked about comparing. And comparing always leaves one person lifted up and one person put down. So let's put that out of our way of thinking. That's not right. That's not from God. Let's compare ourselves to Jesus. He's perfect. We know we could never be perfect, but he has great love for us. Let's strive to be more and more like him and follow him. But let's not compare ourselves with each other. Okay, so let's put all of that comparison and that judgment and that pride aside. But there's three things that we can do to celebrate with truth. The first one is in your own personal life, celebrate truth in your own personal life. There's a story of a young man who's recently married and has some young kids. And he went out one night and he was out spending some time with his friends and, you know, they were just hanging out and stuff. And during the, during the night, he, he saw, you know, another, you know, pretty lady and stuff, and, uh, you know, they, they were talking and stuff, and, you know, he was facing some temptation. He was thinking, like, okay, you know, maybe this or that, or, you know, continuing in a relationship with her, with her. And it was difficult for him. He had to make a choice. 
And thankfully, he had good friends around there with him, and they, they, they encouraged him. They said, you know, don't do this. This is a silly idea. But for him, it was saying, no, he had to say no to something that was difficult for him. He, you know, be honest with his friends. You know, this is difficult for me to, to say no to. But then when he got home, he realized how foolish of a decision that would have been to, you know, strike up a relationship with that girl or, you know, start having a, another relationship or whatever. Because he went and he saw his wife and his family and his kids. And he said, you know what? The world might have said that that was a good idea. But I am going to define my win, dis define my success as saying yes to the truth. And the truth of the word of God, be faithful to your wife, be faithful to your spouse. He's saying, the world might say that that was the way to go, but I'm going to define my success by the word of God. And he said this to, him, to himself, and because he was just being honest. He said, you know, it felt like, you know, that was maybe the right thing to do, but he's like, nope, I'm gonna choose to celebrate the truth. I'm going to choose my win as this is my win. And maybe your situation's different. Maybe your situation is honesty with your finances or honesty with your company's finances. Truth and honesty are the win, not getting what, all, all that you can take. Define the win, celebrate with truth. Maybe the situation is different. Maybe the situation is a temptation to gossip. Maybe the situation is a temptation to, to steal. Maybe the situation is a temptation to get ahead by cutting corners, telling lies, putting other people down. No, let's be people who rejoice with the truth. Rejoice with the truth. I think as Christians, we need to do more to celebrate victory over temptation than we currently do. There is something that that says oh yeah you you you're saying no to temptation but oh it's so hard and it's so difficult no rejoice with the truth say no to that but be filled with joy say yes this is my victory this is my win this is my success it's victory over temptation it's rejoicing with the truth. Because you know what? Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're not celebrating a decision. You're celebrating with the King of Kings. You're celebrating with the Lord of Lords. Have victory. Rejoice when you say no to temptation because you're doing it with Jesus who also said no to temptation. This is truth. Get to know the truth. Celebrate mercy as well. You know, we talked about how we think about other people when they fall. Let's not rejoice at their failures. But listen to what the Bible says about mercy. Mercy and truth have met together. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. That's Psalms 85 verse 10. Proverbs 3 verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Mercy and truth go together. Mercy and truth go together. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Just means righteous. Just means truthful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That word just, it, it's a legal term. And it means he has all right and all authority to forgive. And so in truth, 
there is forgiveness. In truth, there is cleansing. In truth, there is mercy. Not judgment, not rejoicing at wrongdoing, saying they're bad, I'm good, look at me. No, rejoicing with the truth. Truth is merciful. Truth and mercy go together. It's all right and it's all truth. It's just because of the price that Jesus paid. And once again, be a person who rejoices with the truth. Jesus is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. I want to encourage you all. Be somebody who rejoices with the truth. Don't think it's a small thing to have victory over temptation. Don't think it's a small thing to say no when your heart wants to do something wrong. Don't think it's a small thing. Satan wants to say, oh yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's so difficult. God calls you to a difficult life. No, don't think like that. Rejoice. Rejoice with truth. Rejoice with victory. Rejoice when you, when you or your friend or someone says no to those temptations. Because every day that you walk, every time you make a decision, it gets easier and easier to make the next decision. So say no, but celebrate the no. Celebrate those things and celebrate with truth. Rejoice with truth. I just want to pray for a couple of people who are out there today. First, I want to say it's not too late to make that change. Maybe you've given your life to the Lord and you say, man, I've, I haven't really said no to temptation. I've, I've said yes to temptation too many times. Every day is, a, is an opportunity for a new day. God says his, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And his mercy for you today is new. His mercy for you today is new. And if you've said yes to temptation way too many times, today is a new day. Today is a new chance to say no and to rejoice with the truth. Maybe you don't even feel like you want to say no to it, but realize that God is on your side. Truth, who is revealed in the man Jesus, is on your side. Truth is with you. And so I want to say to you, there is hope. There is hope. Maybe you've never had a relationship with truth before. Maybe you've never rejoiced with truth before. Maybe you don't know that mercy of Jesus, that faithfulness, that justice in his forgiveness that we see in 1 John 1 verse 9 where it says he is faithful and just. Maybe you've never experienced that the cleansing from all unrighteousness. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is your day. It just takes a response. It just, just takes a crying out to Jesus and say, Jesus, God of truth, here I am. All that you have, I want it. I take it. And I just want to pray for you. And I want... And, 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 if, and if this is you, maybe you've never, you haven't said no to temptation enough, or maybe you don't have that relationship with Jesus, I want you to, to close your eyes now while, while we pray and open up your heart to Jesus. And afterwards, I'm going to close this service. But if this is you, we want to know. We want to to have a relationship with you. We want to pray with you. We want to talk to you, whether it be by text or face-to-face -face or even by phone call. But we would ask you to come 
and contact us. The numbers that are on the screen there or even through Facebook Messenger or whatever. But let's pray together. And if this is you, just open up your heart to the Lord Jesus. And then after we're done praying, then come and contact us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of truth. God, if number one, if we have been people who rejoice at wrongdoing, we pray you would forgive us. Let us not be like that anymore. We make a decision to change, to come to you. Secondly, God, I know there's people out there who have said yes to temptation too many times. God, I pray right now for them. And I pray that they would experience your spirit, your presence, your love, wherever they are, whether they're sitting in a cafe with headphones in, watching this by themselves, or they're in their small group, God, move. Move upon them by the power of your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Holy Spirit, God, move upon them. God, we rejoice with truth. Help us to be people who rejoice with truth more and more, who rejoice in the victories, rejoice in the wins according to your word, O oh God. And let us be people who say yes to you and to your truth. God, I pray for each one of those people who are out there who have never experienced mercy and truth. The faithfulness and justice of Jesus who forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. This is truth. This is your truth, Jesus. And we stand upon your word and say, God, I want it. I want this truth of your forgiveness in my life today. If this is you, just say to God, I believe. I believe in your truth. I believe in your mercy. I believe in Jesus who died on the cross to take away all my sins. I believe in your forgiveness. And I believe in the truth that you have cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Like I said, if you prayed this prayer from your heart, please contact us. We can't see you face to face where we are in this room right now, but I believe there are some of you out there. Please contact us and we'll walk in this journey with Jesus together. God bless you. Have a great week.